I really was a big fan of Streamy. So tell me a little bit about that story. So that's switch from the thing. We're bringing Streamy back. Oh, that's nice as an app. As an app. Oh, that makes so much it's sense. It's the ultimate dog food, right? Right. So <laughs> tell us a little bit about this. So more from your entrepreneurial um, history and those kind of fun days. You know, tell us a little bit about Streamy and then yeah. how did you move to Facebook? Came here and you know, sold in some of the fun stories we talked about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so Streamy was an idea we started in college with my buddy, and we moved out to California from Pittsburgh and uh, just started building it you know I was a big database guy mm -hmm. but didn't know anything except the relational database and the B tree and all that good stuff <clears throat> and we built the whole thing on Postgres mm -hmm. and then all the usual problems right more data we had the slower it got you know we, we did, were an RSS crawling so what, thing, what right so we had all this oh, RSS so had, so streaming crawling was, side of it so to maybe uh, yeah it was like a real time bit. RSS reader okay right so we ingested but with really cool sharing features and all a lot of real time stuff. sharing stuff all kinds of discovery right we were doing natural language processing and machine learning all this stuff and there's a lot of crawling too right yeah. and uh, Postgres was not handling it yeah right and we also had like a fifty thousand dollar database server. And our very you, limited you, funds. You, yeah, you paid this all with your three credit cards, I heard, yeah? Or four? Until I got the consulting gigs from you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. It was a rough time towards the end there. But, uh, you know, what happened was Postgres was just running dry and we just couldn't get anything out of, out of it. I was actually interviewing somebody, mm -hmm. this uh, grad student from USC, and this was back in LA. And uh, he's like, hey, have you heard about this Hadoop thing? I had never heard of it. This is in 2007. Yeah. Had not heard of oh, it. Man. Didn't know what it was. Ten years since 10 years. Then all it, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not really an old timer. You're yeah. an old timer. But uh, uh, in more ways than one. Um, but It's but, about the mileage, not about the time. There you go. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we I, I learned about it. Mm -hmm. HBase had just kind of started around then. And I was like, wow we could actually do all of the different things that we're doing on here, right? Like, this is good for, for storing our raw data. This is good for MapReduce. is good for doing our crawling pipelines. HBase is great for doing our analytics and for actually storing user data and serving it out. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this is like an OLAP OLTP thing where you can mix these different workloads and it's data structure storage, Yeah. right? The thing I always had about Postgres was like this query planner. Yeah. I'm always trying to circumvent, yeah. <laughs> I'm always trying to get around this magic black box. Right. There isn't a black box yeah. in Hadoop and HBase, right? Yeah. Which is maybe part of the challenge of it. Well, but you know, a big mess, no black box, but a big mess. <laughs> no black box, but a big mess. And you know, at the time, HBase was not ready for mm -hmm. that, right? And so I got a lot into the development of HBase itself and really trying to make it more real time. Right, yeah. so we rewrote the the read the read pipeline, the write pipeline, yeah, was really it? optimizing it for low latency and things right. like that. And, and uh, one of the really cool things, if I remember correctly, was that lazy object um, loading. Help me, where was a big performance spectrum in HBase? Where I think you had proxy objects and you only read them as you really access the object or something like this. Yes, I think I know what you're talking about. So <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. You wrote it, right? If I'm, yeah, I think so. There's a couple things that we did. Like one was um, the early, early stuff we did mm -hmm. was every single cell yeah. was its own object. Right. And yes, you would do several transformations of this object before you before you it. actually spit it out. Yeah. Right? Because what HBase doesn't have a query planner, but it does have you know predicate push downs. Yeah. And it does have selection of columns mm -hmm. and all different kinds of some things you do need to run. And yes, there used to be like three transformations in HBase before you got the thing back out, right? Yeah. And uh, part of that was we, we rebuilt everything on top of these just binary data. Yeah. Everything switched to being a byte array. Yeah. Everything got, instead of turning it into an object, mm. right? You just do byte comparisons right. within the same big what blob, right? Incredibly fast and compared to utilizing a string and then trying to do a hash on it, yeah. And, and in HBase, every value of everything is its own cell. And so right. if you're doing an object per cell and you're doing multiple transformations of that object, right. multiple creations, it's just right. you create all of this churn in the memory and, right. and the garbage tons collectors of CPU and busy, all that yeah. kind of stuff. And yeah, I mean, we, I forget all the numbers, but it was like 100x performance right. gains out of all that stuff. Yeah. There was a lot of quick wins because, yeah. you know, it was built by PowerSet to store crawling data yeah. right. and not to serve data to a website. You exactly. Know? And that's where we tried to get it, right? And mm -hmm. I think it's still getting there. Right, and, and uh, 
you know, that company had its challenges. We had a really hard time raising money in 2008. Yeah. And that's when we started to talk a little bit. Yeah. Um, in 2008, I think. And uh, I started to do Hadoop consulting. And, um, really to, to fund the company as we were kind of trying to figure out a way to make money and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, and then the big blue company came. And around. then the big blue came. The blue, the big blue company came and uh, made me an offer I couldn't refuse. Yeah, um, you know I was in living in Los Angeles at the time, and I didn't want to move no matter what. Yeah, they let me commute, and yeah. you know the real on reason on an airplane, on an airplane. Yeah, yeah, that, that's so L A. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, really, what it was about was um, taking HBase to the next level. Yeah, you know, um, they had the talent. And the problems, right, right, and once I found out that they had the appetite, mm -hmm. I went, right, yeah. and so it was when they made the decision to use HBase for Facebook messages. As soon as that decision was made, I was like, I'm ready. Yeah, um, because that you know that's one of the things they was missing was like that big sponsor, right, with that big media use case, right, right? and now Facebook messages is like four nines of reliability, yeah, and tens of petabytes online. 24/7. You know, every instant message you send on Facebook stored and indexed and served out of HBase. 